Hey, everybody, and welcome to About Her Brand, the podcast that's about the business of growing a business, specifically focusing on brand strategy. I'm super excited today. Um, this is my first episode with guests. So hi, guests. Hi. <laughs> Um, I'm very fortunate because I am joined today by Dr. Patrice Carter and by Dr. Anissa Short, both of whom I've known for a number of years. And, and the story is just so very in interesting. Today, specifically, we're going to be talking about mentorship. And I think it's so funny because um, I hired Anissa as my mentor. I convinced her that she needed to mentor me because I just think that she is like super, super phenomenal in the business world. She has this way of connecting with people and making them feel like um, like they're her best friend. And I needed to learn that skill set because I'm so dry at that. <laughs> and so I called Anissa and she was like, I'm not taking any, I'm, I'm not taking any mentees, any one-on-ones, but I got a program for you. And I, I asked her to pray about it and she did. And then I found out shortly thereafter, I connected with um, Dr. Carter. And we, do you ladies mind if I call you by your first names or do you prefer Please your do. official Please. titles? I just okay. doesn't miss this fine with me. I, you worked for doctor. I tell you that all the time. You you earned that. But thank you for letting me be casual with you. So I ran into Patrice and um, we were talking and I said, no, there still might be opportunity for us to, to connect and collaborate on something else. I do have a coach, but there still might be. And funny enough, well, I'll let you guys tell that story. But anyhow, I found out at the at at later at a later time that Anissa Patrice is your coach. Exactly. So I hired you and you are coached by Patrice. And Patrice, we'll talk about who you've been coached by eventually, but I just thought that that connection was so profound. And then mm -hmm. given the like the other connectivity that we've shared over the years. I said, I want to sit down with these ladies and I want to talk about the power of mentorship. So before we even get started, I want to ask each of you a question. I want you to int introduce yourself and I want you to just give us your elevator pitch because this is about branding and it's about the business of building a business. So tell me your elevator pitch and who you are. And we'll start with you since Patrice went first. We'll start with you, Anissa. All right. Well, thank you again, Tisha, for this opportunity. I am Dr. Anissa Short, the success strategist and I champion female home-based entrepreneurs with the books that I write, my speaking platform, the events that I host, and my online course. Wonderful. And Dr. Carter, Patrice Carter? So my name is Dr. Patrice Carter, and I'm the CEO of Breakpoint Coaching Collective LLC in partnership with my love, Dalton. And through my company, we certify, equip, and train Christian life coaches. And I also mentor female service-based professionals who want to package their expertise into digital courses and online schools. Awesome. And I can vouch for both of you. I know that you're actually doing the business that you say you're doing. <laughs> um, I, because, you know, often people will have these titles mm -hmm. and they, they aspire to do the things that they say that they're going to do, but they just mm -hmm. haven't gotten there yet. But I can actually say that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you ladies are fully functioning in the fields that you say that you are working in. Um, can you tell us who is your target audience and how did you identify and engage with them? So like who, who do you serve and how do you connect with them? Should I Either go first? Either jump right in. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay. So, so it was clear to me many years ago that the market that I was to, um, to serve were women. As a matter of fact, without going into a lot of detail, that was given to me when I was in college majoring in accounting and not really happy with that, that major. And it was, it was given to me to change my major to business because I would one day be consulting and coaching women in business, which didn't okay. make sense. It didn't make sense to me then, but it makes sense now. Um, I became very much engaged in the direct sales market, um, targeting mostly women as my clients, as well as those that I coached. And then when I began to feel the need to pivot, it was impressed upon me that the market would remain the same, which would be female entrepreneurs. But I had a special call to those building businesses within the walls of their home because they are a unique subset within the entrepreneurial community in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And so after over 20 years of being engaged in entrepreneurship from within the walls of your home, my home rather, I now target to work with people that fall in that category, no matter what, what business plan they've a, a chosen to adopt. Okay. And how do you connect with your customer, Anissa? How do you find that? Um, I'm networking. 
usually a lot of people come from networking. I'm a social butterfly for those who know me. So Mm -hmm. especially when I moved to Fayetteville is when I really took off into taking things in a different direction. And I found that being actively engaged in my community as Anissa, not as Dr. Short, not as the success strategist, not as the person selling, you know, widgets and things of that nature, but just as Anissa, I wanted people to know me as their friend and their neighbor first. And so I built relationships from that perspective. So networking events, referrals, friends of friends, those were, um, that was really the foundation of how I built. That's so good. Now, how about you, Patrice? Who is your target audience and how do you connect with them? Thank you for repeating the question. <laughs> so, <laughs> audience, um, like Dr. Anissa, like Anissa, is, um, has predominantly been women. And while though I have had multiple um, male clients in the form of Christian life coach trainees, and even now I have a male client that I'm serving as a digital course creation mentor, so that said, but predominantly, I feel women have always been drawn to me and I've always been drawn to wanting to help them. Um, specifically, I know we're just, I think we're still in International Women's Month. And yes. I just believe that we have this unique position of being able to support each other, to champion each other, as Dr. Nissa said, and to also give of our expertise in a way that supports women. And my desire is to put them to work, for them to have a living wage, for them to be able to make a living doing the thing they love and that they have been called to do. So I strive to be that example. Um, So how I meet people or how I meet my target market or how I identify them specifically is through, like Dr. Nessa said, networking. But also um, I have um, social media platforms. So I meet them on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, anywhere I see women that are serving people through some type of um, service-based profession that I've also held. So coaching, speaking, um, authors, I'm a published author, um, or some form of leadership or executive work because I came out of that background. So I specifically look for them. I target them. I'll reach out. So I do cold calling. I do warm referral marketing also. So anywhere there are people and there are women, I'm reaching out and going about that. So one thing I love that Anissa shared is that she shows up as Anissa. And so for me, I always want to show up I show up as Dr. Patrice, but not just to carry the title, but just because I believe that what God has said to me in getting the PhD was it was really to open doors um, so that I could move for him. But also it inspires other women to do the same, that whatever yeah. it is they have in their heart and mind, they can be that. Exactly. But I always strive to show up as a safe place. That's my biggest thing. Yeah. I want to be a safe place for other women to excel and aspire to the thing they've been called to do. And to share all I know. If I know it, I want you to know it. If I have it, I want you to have it. Yeah, that's absolutely. Good. And 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 Patrice, I, re, I that has been consistent about both you and Anissa. What you all shared in your, you know, who I am. It's it's been consistent. I as I said, uh, beyond the the mentorship relationship, um, I met Patrice right before you were going to marry Dalton. I don't even know if you remember this. But you were having at you, your apartment, you guys were having like a Bible study or some sort of a get together. I can't remember exactly what it was. Someone had invited me. And when I came, there was just such a genuine, like you were just effervescent. You were smiling and you were, and I was in such a broken place, Patrice. I, like my, I had, my heart had been broken and to be around you and Dalton was just so refreshing. It was like a breath of fresh air, like coming into the room, just you know, sometimes there are people who the weight lifts when you're around them. And I just experienced that. And then even with you, Anissa, it was like when we met, there was just this instant connection and that same bubbly, happy, like just joy came out of you. And then to see you all functioning in your entrepreneurial roles, there was there's this balance that you bring to both of those perspectives. And I, I recognize it with the both of you. So I want to ask you about that before we really dive into the mentorship aspect. How do you ladies, being successful women in business, still manage to maintain your joy and still manage to prioritize the things that are important to you beyond just your business? That's a good question. <laughs> Great. Wow. Okay. That's because we can miss and talk about <laughs> when we're talking about our Proverbs 31 yeah, duties. Right. Yes. And this, you go first. Okay. So. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you, Tisha, for the question and for the compliment. I can't take credit for it. What you see in me with regards to joy being joyful is as a result of my connection to my creator. It really is because 
if you knew my story, you'd be wondering, how could she still be so happy? You know, you know, that kind of thing. But what I will say is this, I believe that any person, but particularly women, because that's who we're called to, when they truly mm-hmm. tap into what they were purposed to do, and they truly walk in their own giftings, it's easy. So when people look at it and say, it seems so easy, you just do this so effortlessly. It's because this is what I was wired to do. And a lot of mm-hmm. times we are functioning in capacities or in titles we're miserable, but we do it because it pays the bills. We do it because we've already invested so much time. And I'm not knocking people for doing that. I'm just making a point and they're not fulfilled. But when you really, truly are functioning and operating in a manner that's consistent with who you are called to be, that ties into your gifts, your talents, how you're wired, as I phrase it, then then that's what's supposed to happen. That's how yes. you're, you represent every time you show up. So because I know this is what I was called to do. And although sometimes I don't quite hadn't quite figured it all out, it's still a journey where I'm still dotting the I's and crossing T's. I still can still I still can be genuinely myself. And then everything yeah. else, all of the decisions I make with regards to my business and the decisions I make still fall within the parameter. I call it a three legged stool, faith, family, finances. If it doesn't support those three, I don't participate. Yes. Yeah. That's good. Um, so I just want to one say thank you so much for um just such a beautiful sentiment. I think we were over the singles ministry. I'm almost certain that's I where so. um, met. And so that said, um, like Anissa shared, everything that we do has to be in alignment with who we are. And often I see people that are misaligned because, like Anissa said, they're not operating from that place of authenticity and what they're truly called to do because of whatever reason that is. But what came up for me was one of the things that we talk about as coaches is values alignment. So I operate within my values. My values are faith-based, family, um, fun, and finances. So there are other ones, but it has to be really faithful because like that is like the foundation of everything I do. So if it doesn't align with that, then I don't do it. Um, if it's not fun, I don't want any part of it because my sister, um, Dr. Garlinda Price says uh, she can out fun everybody. It has to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> it has to make dollars and cents. And exactly. so when I make dollars and cents, and I say that unashamedly because we're in the business of making money. We're here in business to make impact and we're here to make money. But I think so often we're ashamed to say that we want to make money. But yes. other than that, it's a hobby. So going back to the values, we have to really begin to think about what is it that I value? And then based on who has God called me to be, like Anissa said, and then when you marry those two things, what you value and what you are called to do, it does happen with ease. Now, I'll tell you that it happens with ease and intention. So I have to be specifically for myself. I have to be intentional um, because I do have a husband and I have myself. And up until recently, I, I'm an empty nester. We're empty nesters now. I had a child. And so I had to really align my life in a way that supported those things. Yeah. And so that meant finding balance in the schedule. So coming up with a schedule that works for me. Yes. So I don't talk to people on Mondays and Fridays because I'm just coming out of the weekend. It might've been a rough weekend. Monday is not the day for us to be trying to have a meeting. Friday, (laughs) I want to go do something fun. So I meet people Tuesdays through Thursday. So then I know that's the days I'm working. Wednesdays, I take a, a day off. So trying to figure out your schedule and what really truly works for you and giving yourself permission to do that. Yeah. Because for a long time, I was in an employee mindset. Yes. The first 10 years of my business, I was in an employee mindset. And I struggled because I'm like, I'm not an employee. I don't have to be here nine to five. Because I was already a good steward. That's why I got released to be an entrepreneur, because I handled somebody else's business well. I could handle mine well. So yeah. I don't know what you hear and all that. But I will say intentionality, values alignment, and really getting clear on what you want and making your life smart like that. But you have to be faithful to home. You got to handle, you got to feed your man, you got to feed your kids. Because if you don't handle business at home, then your business is going to fall apart because you're out of alignment. That's true. So all those things have to begin to work together. That's so good. That's so good. And you said something, and I want to make sure that people that hear this, hear what you said. You said, I had to get out of an employee mindset. That was bad. You know, we are very, 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 very conditioned to think with that employee mindset. I have to be at work. I have to get up, you know, at six o'clock in the morning so that I can be on the, be on the phones by eight o'clock. And I have to work until six 30. And, you know, like we have this and truly I've, I've done the same thing. I've had to craft time where it's, it's, it's off limits. Nobody can touch that time because 
first of all, and like much like you guys say, my faith is important. I have to recenter with God. Yes, absolutely. If I don't take that time, I'm not creative. I don't function well. I'm just on autopilot and it's not good for me or anybody. Right, right. And to, t- to, to see my family suffer while other people benefit from my expertise, I, I can't do that. Yeah. I, I just can't do that. Transparently, Dalton was saying to me, you talk to people all day long, but then you won't even, you don't have anything for me. And I'm like, because by the time I get through, t- I don't want to talk. I, I, have talk no words. Yeah. I have no words. Talking. I have no words left, sir. Guilty. And, and that was not fair to it's him. Not. And I'm really like, isn't. oh my God, help me. How do I find balance in this? And and then to the employee mindset to me came with guilt because if I didn't get up at nine, I didn't work till six, then I felt guilty. But I'm like, you're in charge. Like, you don't, and I'm going to get the work done. One thing about Patrice is that this mission is not going to fail. Right. I'm going to accomplish what needs to be accomplished. And so I was just being really hard on myself. Right. So I think that's something that kind of comes as a byproduct of entrepreneurship when you're on your own. It just, it already comes with its own pressures, but I was adding pressure. Yes, true. Absolutely. I like to add. To your point, with the question itself, with regards to the balance or the harmony, whichever word you choose, when I make reference to faith, family, and finances, those are my first three preferences. Everything starts there. You know, what's Mm going to be my prayer time, my reading time? What, what, you know, how does my day start? Um, Fridays are date night. So three o'clock, I shut down because Friday, if we just sitting in the house, Netflix and Netflix and chill, it doesn't matter. But that's Mm -hmm. set aside time. So that's. And if I have to do something on a Friday, then I make sure that Saturday is our time. All of that is encompassed. And then, of course, if the decision, some things are good, but they're not beneficial. I mean, I can't go to everything because I still need to have some, I need to have some time to decompress myself. You know, and if you're always on go mode, you're not, you're not the best, the best version of yourself. Another thing too is when you made reference to um, the employee mindset. I talk a lot with the ladies that I've mentored over the years about as a business owner, you're not just the worker bee. You have to be the str- the strategist as well. Yes. So what are your goals? You're not just working just to be doing things randomly. Do you have a target that you're trying to hit? And so as an employee, we don't really have to work, worry about the target or the goals because the CEO or the person that's in charge has established that. But if you're just busy doing things aimlessly without specific intention, and you don't have a target that you're going to hit, you're just out here being busy and not necessarily productive. So when you talk about employee mindset, I think that's important to bring out as well. You need to be control of your own schedule, do things from that perspective, but also make sure you're working from a place of intention. If you've not set those targets and those goals, you're probably just being busy and not productive. That's so good. That's so good. Tisha too, it came up for me is, and I'll, I'm happy to share this. I'm trying to work myself out of the business. So I'm, we're an LLC. So there's no reason I should be the one showing up doing all this work because an LLC is a partnership. I'm not trying to be funny, but a no, CEO, you're right. You're right. To do the grunt, we have to do the grunt work initially. Like you're it, boo. Like you're going to be the janitor, the HR. Everything, right. Your HR, your shipping and receiving. <laughs> you're going to be the sales, the shipping and receiving. You're going to mm-hmm. be the one. I mean, you're just going to be her and him and it and everybody until you get a team. But we should be approaching what I wish someone would have told me is you need to approach your business as something that you are managing and running, yes. and not in. Because I had to really get out of the business because it, I was burnt. I really burned myself out bad. Yeah. So now what I'm recognizing is, OK, it's starting to happen again, not in a negative way, but I see the writing on the wall, like, OK, you got to figure out how you can build your team back up and get people in position so yeah. that you don't become an employee, not only exactly. an employee. Mindset, but you don't end up being the employee. The employee. <laughs> you don't want to own you your job. You don't want to own your job. It's not structured for you to be an employee. No, it's right. right. Especially if you're LLC. Exactly. You know, to your yeah. point, also, Patrice, is the things that I talked about. Um, when you come, when we're making reference to building your team in the in the specific niche that I work in, most women work they're working in their homes, right? Mm-hmm. So. You know, I'll, I I have people laughing at me sometimes and I'll say, well, listen, I, I got to let you go because the next two hours, two and a half hours, I have to be a wife. So I'll get back with y'all tomorrow. And they go like, mm-hmm. what are you talking about? I said, because I've designated time that at certain points I cut off, you know, I'm going to be, a, yes. you know, that's the balance of it. But here's the other thing in building your team, especially if you're building your business for within the walls of your home, you don't have to be the laundry person and the cleaner either. Your team can okay. consist of a housekeeper. 
your yeah. team, you know, Instacart, now. Work, Instacart works for me. <laughs> okay. I don't know about yeah. the rest of y'all, but they're a part of my yeah. team, right? They're part of my team because I'm not going to the grocery store. It's been an hour and a half. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got to get my housekeeper back. So when I, even when I have a housekeeper and I had an assistant, I never referred to, they were part of my team because what they yeah. did and what they do for me alleviates time so I can focus elsewhere, right? So that's a, that's another point I wanted to reference. And then to your point also, Patrice, about being getting out of your business. Now, this is just my personal pet peeve. Y'all pray for me, okay? But a lot of oh times my- we use the, the terminology. We talked about this, Patrice. A lot of times you hear women calling themselves a boss babe. I'm like, you're not a boss babe. You have one, there are, you have no employees. Right. <laughs> Who are you bossing? So, so it's okay. I understand why we use it, but let's be clear. Yeah. Until yeah. you have a staff, until you have payroll or somebody, like that, you're not a boss. You right. You are bossing yourself, I guess, maybe, but it's not you. After 10 years, you're still a boss, baby. You're the it. You're the one. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway, that's just a I mean, sidebar. Like I love that. I mean, to employ- contractors and contract them to myself. <laughs> I'm just writing myself a check. I love that. I do love that. And listen, and one of the things, and I think I might've said this to to Patrice, I may have said it to you also, Anissa, but this year alone, God called me to a place of integrity in my business. And when he said that, it was like, I need you to be very truthful about where you are. I need for you to own the fact that it's only you working in your business. I need for you to create a plan. If you don't like that, make a plan to make it not so. Don't try to oversell what you're doing, but don't undersell it. Like be truthful about right. where you are. Right. Tell the truth about your good days. Tell the truth about your bad days. And when mm-hmm. I tell you within a month of adopting that mindset, my business has grown more than I, and I'm not talking about financially, the money's coming. I'm mm-hmm. talking about the product line. I'm talking about my intellectual knowledge. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the relationships. They have incrementally increased. That's good. I'm grateful that God mm-hmm. pulled me back and said, hey, stop faking like you got it. Stop mm-hmm. stop doing that. And I think that's what that boss babe mentality is. Let me, let me hit on, because you guys touched a lot. Let me ask this question. Somebody had to teach you that. Now, for most of us as entrepreneurs, the reality is we're very curious. And so we'll go out and we'll learn as much as we can on our own volition. How are you, who is teaching you to shift into this thinking? Because that's why I, I hired a coach. Because I said, I've come to the end of my own intellect. (laughs) I have done everything that I can do in my own strength. I need help. And when I said I need help, immediately I was like, I need to hire a coach. And so in this, that's how our relationship has turned into one of of coach and and coachy. And to me, that's a mentorship relationship, but it's a mentorship relationship with an obligation on my end too, because sometimes in mentorship relationships, it's the mentee receives, 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 and there's yeah. very little that they can pour back in. In a coaching relationship, I'm being mentored, so but I'm yeah. taking my resources to to come back to you and say, thank you for that. Thank you for yeah. that. It's thank you for that. And right. so, and I think that's important. It's great to mentor. I think it's important to mentor, but to coach bears a different significance because there's a responsibility on my end, not just to implement what you say, but also to make sure that I am pouring financially into you so that you can continue to pour into me. So how did you go? How did you end up saying I need Patrice and Patrice, I'm going to come and ask you, who did you need? Who poured into you? Okay. So my answer to your question is two parts. Okay. So I, I made reference earlier that I was very much engaged in a leadership capacity in a direct sales industry. Now that, mm-hmm. that was something that I never even imagined doing, honestly. And when I considered yeah. um, removing myself many years ago, I was like, well, this is, this is phased out. It was fun while it lasted. Um, I know for mm-hmm. a fact, Holy Spirit told me to stay because there were things I needed to learn. But what ended mm-hmm. up happening is that I began to be mentored by the top of the top. I had yes. direct contact with them. And then they showed me practically and insp- experientially how I could take what I learned in business school and apply it to business. It's one thing to take the mm-hmm. class, to learn the, the theories, to take the test, to get the degree, right? But until you actually right. put it to practice, you truly don't know it. It's those that do the will that know the will, right? So right. those people poured into me. They they helped me to see I need to shift my mindset. They taught me some of the things that I know now. So I saw 
even the more the value in what that offered me staying in that community, because then I could pour into others what was poured into me. When mm-hmm. I began to think about making a shift in 2022, really, it was right after COVID, I really put, you know, action to what I was thinking in 2023. Right. I said, I need to create some kind of, I need to create something that would allow me to duplicate myself. So I don't always have to be present. It's something I can yeah. offer to people. And so I became acquainted with Patrice, you know, previously, my husband went through the certification to be a life coach with her. And I knew she had an online course. So I have the courage. I, I ask for what I want, you know, so yes. it was like, okay, I knew this is what I needed, but guess what? I'm not really in a position to ask for, but I'm going to ask for it anyway. So I went straight to Patrice because I knew she create, you know, she helped people create courses and that's how that came about. And so she mm-hmm. walked me through the process. I think a lot of times we know what we need, but we're afraid to ask. I, I encourage yeah. everyone to step out on faith and be courageous. It doesn't mean you're afraid. It just means you do it, do it anyway. And I and, already know what's going to two answers. She's going to say yes or no. So I already knew. Right. You know, right. It's I a 50 50 chance. Yes. Right. <laughs> Right. But right. you know, a lot of us cannot handle the idea of rejection. So it's not even that we can't right. handle the rejection. We just can't handle the idea. Now, be, be, Patrice, before you answered, um, Anissa said about about courage, being courageous. I don't know if y'all peeped this, but I, I, I saw it when um, we were at the most recent networking event that the three of us had attended. Mm-hmm. The question was posed to Dr. Carter, how can we support you? Dr. Carter had a ready answer, honey, because her answer was, I would like to enter into partnership with this community college, and I would like for you all to contract with me for me to facilitate this course. I, I, I'm, a, I'm an observant person, so I looked to see, okay, how are you getting ready to respond to this? Because that was that was cor- courageous, right? It was. That was right. a great, and it was a good ask because a lot of people say, "Oh, if you'll just, you know, follow me, or if you'll share my course." She asked for something measurable, something tangible, and something that would really be impactful to her business. That woman did not know how to respond. She did. She, did. she didn't I, know I how to respond to that. It was and like, I, oh. I loved it. I loved it, and I said, "At the next time somebody asks me for what I need, I'm going big." I'm going big because all they can do is say yes or no. But Dr. Yes. Carter, who taught you how to who taught you how to do that? And don't ask me if you don't want to know. But I prayed <laughs> about. It. I was like, guys, you're gonna have this is what I want. So I'm not gonna pity pat around. Like I'm with Anissa. If I want, it, I'm asking for it. And it wasn't always that way. Yeah. So Anissa, also thank you for the opportunity to work with you. I always wanted to work with her from the time I met her. I thought she was just amazing. But she has low key energy. So I was like, when I met her, I'm like on ten all the time. So she <laughs> she's on ten behind the scenes. People don't know that. But right. when you. See how much she's, but she's the accountant. <laughs> Very reserved. Very until reserved. Until you get to know me. Until you get to know me, then it's different, right? And at that point, once you once she knows you, then yes, she's that person. So right. I said, hey, and she said, hey, Patrice. I was like, oh, no, she's going, you're going to love. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that is <laughs> And so who has coached me? Okay, so I will say, Again, we're all roads lead back to faith. So the Lord released me from full-time employment 15 years ago. I, he released me from an $80,000 a year job that was going to convert, as I shared with you guys when we were together in that audience last time. It was going to convert to civil service. It was going to, I was going to be set, six figures income. But I hated it. I wanted to work on my own. God said, yes, come into the vineyard. So he released me. So that in that process, he became my mentor. He became the C- the Holy Spirit was my CEO and mentor because there was no one initially. Mm-hmm. But then that said, um, I started looking around for mentors and I found, I went to LinkedIn and I found a woman who was um, African-American and she was a coach and a counselor and a believer. And I reached out to her and I said, would you mentor me? And she said, no. And so she was like, no, ma'am, I don't have time for that. I'm going to do something different, but I wish you will. Wow. So but some time passed and I ended up being in an environment where I was invited to share about my coaching and my book. And she was in that in that space. And I didn't know she was in the audience. She came up to me afterwards and said, you reached out to me. I said, no, but the Lord has encouraged me that I'm to mentor you. Mm one year and to get your coaching business started, I'm going to give you my contracts, all of my forms, resources, and a scholarship 
So um, so asking might initially result in a rejection, but if you continue to be consistent in the thing that God has closer to it, right? Yes, if you be faithful, then sometimes He's just checking you to see, you know, are you going to because you you don't have serious, right? Exactly. So were you really exactly? So she ended up coming and being so she was my mentor. I would say my husband, let me go back. So it was the Holy Spirit, then my husband, because when I, the day the Lord released me from my job, I had to drive down to his job and say, hey, this is what the Lord revealed. And he said, go walk by faith. Well, he owned businesses before that. And so he is like my biggest supporter and also not only the biggest supporter, but he has such knowledge that um, he's always advising me. He's, it's like a yin and yang because I'm crazy. He's very reserved. <laughs> okay, so, so he was, um, he will be the second one and then Dr. Angela January. And then from there, um, I had everything I needed at one point in my business. I had the website, I had the certifications and I was not closing. I was not making any money. I could not close a client. And I felt like it was because I really didn't have the ability to articulate my elevator pitch. I will over talk. Um, I was scared of asking for money. Mm-hmm. So my sister, Dr. Garlinda Price, um, has, is a six figure earner um, and just never afraid to ask for money. She's been in business since we graduated from college. And so I asked her what she coached me. But we're twins, as you guys know. And so there's a twin dynamic where she wants to try to manage me. And I'm like, okay, so it didn't work out. It didn't work out. She said, you need a script. And I'm like, I don't want a script. I'm not a telemarketer. I'm not doing it. You need to make cold calls. That's not happening. Not doing none of that. So it didn't work out. And I still wasn't making money. So I had to humble myself and come back to her because she was making money. And she was being successful. And I remember praying and thinking, I'm not making any money. And the Lord said, because she's showing up, you're not. She shows up to her desk every day. You don't. Like, he was just real mm-hmm. direct. With me. And so I went back to her and I said, I, I reached out to you before and I asked you for help and you offered and I didn't want to do what you asked. Would you consider helping me again? And he had worked on her heart. And so when she said, you need a script, she wrote the script with me. That was my voice, my words. I used it the first day I closed my first $2,000 client, $1,900. And I've closed ever since. And so that said, she gave me the courage to use my voice. So it's really not a script. It She just helped me to organize the conversation. Right. Right. Absolutely. So she was a coach to me. Um, so shout outs to her. And then to wrap this all up, long story short. So last year or the year before I hired uh, Coach Jalen Jones. So Coach Jalen Jones is the founder of Black Pretty and Paid University and Inevitable Wealth, which is a group coaching um, that she has recently sunsetted. So you can't, people can't still get in it, but they can still coach with her. Mm -hmm. And with her, I hired her because she is a six-figure coach and I wanted to make six figures. And so what I did um, with her was um, she had a four-part program where each phase we had to accomplish a certain thing and what I came up for me, and this is the culmination of this answer, is mindset. And mm-hmm. so the big issue coming into coaching with her was I didn't have a six-figure mindset. I didn't have the mindset to um, really to think that it was possible. And I didn't have the steps that I needed to um, to get in, in the vein of that. Right. And working with her now, I do. And we just actualized six figures um, gross. So that Congratulations. Said, you. So that said, mindset is the hugest thing. So God dealt with me for three years, guys, on mindset. So three years ago, maybe four years, he started saying to me every year that he was like, you got to work on your mindset. Yeah. You got to work on your mindset. He kept saying that you got, I'm like, well, dang, what else? Is right. But it took three Anything years. Else, God? <laughs> Mindsetting. So I had to work on my mindset as a woman. I had to work on my mindset as a business owner as a wife, um, and as a per like trying to work out, lose weight. So anything I was struggling, he was like, you've got to work on your mindset. Girl, so that I'll- great thing. Don't, don't mention that. <laughs> work on their mindset because like Anissa said, and you said it too, Tisha, I love that you said, I want to pay her. I want to invest in her. You wanted to invest in Dr. Anissa B. Why? Because she's worth investing in because Absolutely. she's done the work invested in. And because if you're going to come 
as a person, if we need something from that person, we should be willing to invest. How am I going to make, want to make six figures, but I'm not willing to invest $5,000 in a right. car? Absolutely. Like, right. I'm not even, I, that's not even intended. You can't be serious. Yeah, you right. can't be right. serious. Right. But then I want to make six figures. Right. Like, no. And so when I hired Jalen, that really stretched me because I had never paid a coach. And when I paid that five thousand dollars, it wasn't even five thousand. I made a deposit, and then I made monthly payments. I don't mind sharing that. And so, when people think they can't afford a coach, you can't afford not to have a coach. You cannot you afford not to. If you say yeah. you want something, and you said God said, then God's gonna make a way for you to pay that person. So That's when true. I paid her the deposit, I didn't have the monthly payment amount and on hand. But by mm-hmm. faith, I believe that she was the coach I was supposed to work with. And when I tell you, I pay her early. God made me, he made it available to me to pay her off early. Mm -hmm. So I believe that whatever we want or need starts with our mindset and faith and the ability to go after and to stick with it. Right, right. And trust and believe for it. That was a long thing. I can can attest to what Patrice is saying because actually Patrice and I had this a similar conversation. What you don't know, Patrice, is that that same conversation I had had with another friend. She mm-hmm. woke up and she called me. She said, girl, I had a dream about you last night. And I was like, what? And she's like, she said, oh, it was so amazing, this dream. And she began to um, share all the, in, you know, the specific points of the dream and this, that, and the third. And then she says, the last thing I heard in my dream about you is you said, go big or go home. Go big. It's time to go big. And I was like, wow, that's great. Then fast forward. I talk to Patrice on the phone about something totally irrelevant. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she goes and says something like, Anissa, you're so amazing. It's just really time for you to go out to the next level. And I went, oh, thank you, Patrice. I appreciate you. You know, she says, I'm not being your cheerleader. Listen, this is the Holy Spirit talking. I was like, yeah, oh. Yeah, yeah. Listen to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it's, time to, it's time for you to stop playing small. And um, mm-hmm. and I'm thinking, playing small? What do you mean? I'm not here, you know. I, am I yeah, obviously I'm not doing it, right? right? So what am I not doing? What are you talking about? I'm in the game, right? Little did I know, I was just busy in the game giving out cups of water. I wasn't really in the game. You know, I was like the water boy, here's a towel, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You know, so that was another push that I need. I'm like, okay, I'm so God, excited what? to take your place as the water boy on the team. Yeah, right, I'm no, so excited. And then, and then, <laughs> now, 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 let's be clear. Everybody needs the, the, the towel boy and the water boy. Yes. Like, the thing about it is, I was like, so what does this mean? And so all of these things started flooding my mind. You need to implement this. You need to implement that. And I'm going like, oh my God, do I need to, how am I going to, I told you to do this. I told you to do that. And and how do we not know? Um, this is what I truly believe that when we step out and do what God told us to do, whether we do it afraid, even we don't have the money, the door is op- of opportunity. So when yeah. I talked to Patrice, about mm-hmm. needing to do this course, I was very upfront. I don't have the money. Can we do this? And she says yeah. yes. And so I, you know, but I, I put to put it out there. I stepped out. I didn't know if she was gonna yeah. say yes or no. I just, I just, just was obedient it's because there has to be an investment. You have to have skin you in the game. And yeah. we will allow, myself included, if we're not careful, we will allow fear to hold us back or the 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 fact that we don't know. And we say we trust God, but we're really not doing what we need to do. We're not right. taking the step or the measures to show that we're really true. You got to have skin in the game. You got to be all in. And if that means, you know, raking up leaves and doing a yard sale or whatever to get the money, if you truly believe God called you to it, then you got to do it. You just That's really right. do. Otherwise, you make him look like he's bipolar and he's not. Right. Right. You know. And you can't expect, you know, I, I have somebody who, you know, who helps me understand biblical concepts and they always say this to me, don't expect for God to do for you what he has commissioned for you to do for yourself. Like right. he will do his part, but he has given you the ability to do your part and he's right. not going to do your part. And so and then, my part is making sure that I'm investing in, in adequate resources to help me understand what I need to do. Exactly. Right. Trust- he's provided and and i believe that people are so quick and i see it all the time and it's no shade to them at all because our faith has to be stretched and my faith was there i was afraid to ask for money i was afraid afraid to pay money you know but i just stopped being afraid you know i really just did because it's there's nothing to be afraid of and what is the worst case scenario there is no worst case scenario yeah and so when anissa asked me hey can i do this i already wanted to work with her and so i say that to say we have to not we have to, I don't want to say it like that. But so often we quote scripture, we say God said, we say the Holy Spirit, we talk about our faith. But when it's time to activate that thing, that's a whole different that's ball, a whole of different ball of wax. Right. 
understanding also how to apply the word of God. So in Abraham, when God told Abraham to go sacrifice Isaac, all Abraham knew was his part, like you just said, Tisha. Right. He had he knew he had Isaac. That was his responsibility. Now, right. how this was happening on the altar and the ram he coming no up. Clue. He didn't have any clue. And then when he walked out, I didn't realize this till last year I read that story. There were three mountains that he looked at and he had to know which mountain. So when he looked at the three mountains, he said, that's the one. He So God told him what to do. God identified where to go. And when he got there, just the thing that I think is so beautiful, and this applies to me and Anissa, what she just shared, God already knew he was going to be coming up the opposite side of the mountain with a ram. Yes. Yeah, so the provision was there all the time. So when she asked me, he knew what she had in her pocket. He knew what she could afford. He knows my heart. So he was already preparing my heart while he's preparing her ask. And yeah, so right. we have to go with that knowledge that when God says step out by faith and he knows what you have in your pocket, he knows what he yeah. possesses on the other side of that. Yeah, that's now, good. I, mean, I want to say something because I want to make sure that our audience doesn't get the wrong impression. Please, audience. Um. You make sure before you reach out to any of the, the ladies on this panel that the Lord told you to do something, because don't think of your own volition that you can go to somebody who charges $5,000 for a program and ask them if they'll just give it to you, because that's not how this works. <laughs> but if the Lord gave you the unction to go, or if you really believe, and, and don't, this is the other thing, you guys, I think that I've learned over the years that you have to be actively doing like you can't just go and tell somebody, tell me how to do it. And you're not willing to put any effort into right. doing it. You have to right. be actively pursuing the do. You cannot expect for right. a, a, a mentor and a coach doesn't come and package it for you. Now they can, but that's a lot more expensive and that's never going to be free. They can do it for you and create a, a ready-made package and hand it over to you. But the, the beauty of the relationship is when you're kind of working together, which leads me to my last question, which I think we're going to get a really great response from the both of you. Um, I want to know what you gain as a coach from working with the people that you work with, because I know what we gain and you each know what you gain as the one being coached. But what do you gain in that relationship? Aside from the, the revenue that comes in, what else are you gleaning from that? Mm. There's a sense of fulfillment for me. Um, it's not, and I can't even put a price on it. You know, whether they, well, let me just go back and say this. When I was in my, um, another world, serving in a leadership capacity as a coach or mentor, Mm -hmm. I didn't actually get paid financially for some of the mentoring I did because of the dynamic of how that business structure was set up. Yes. But when I, when I spoke to a woman and had a conversation with her and she said her goal was to add so much to her household budget every month um, or to get out of debt or to pay this bill off or, you know, become debt free. And she's going to use her business model to, to create the income to do that. I had had a great sense of fulfillment and being able to pour into her to, to help redirect her, to give her some ideas and suggestions and help her implement the strategies necessary to create that. So when she called and she said, you know, that what I wanted this month in my budget, I met and I exceeded, I could celebrate with her because mm -hmm. I saw the level of success. So that level of fulfillment for me is, is much greater than even the dollars and the cents yes. that I received. It's hard yes. for me to say it's, it, and you really can't measure it. I can't even adequately describe it. But because I I sense it and I feel it and I celebrate that, then I realize I'm walking in what I'm called to do. That's the thing. Absolutely. You know? So it's it's hard to articulate. I don't know. Dr. Carter may do a very you know much better job than I did, but that's <laughs> that would be my answer. That would be my answer. No, I I agree. It's like the immediate manifestation and evidence of the thing that God has called you to do is right there in front of you. It's like your yes being or your prayer like this is a prayer that i asked i wanted to work for myself i want and i know who this is who i call to serve so when they're sitting in front of you it is just mind-blowing it's like wow this this is real like i heard him clearly yes um who i feel led to serve is sitting in front of me and then i think anissa can attest to this specifically when building courses it's like creating something out of nothing i understand yes creative breath of God, because she had an idea for the success strategist and for the academy. And so we're talking about it, writing it on paper. And now it's like here for me, it's happening in front of us and it's a living, breathing thing. 
Like you just can't put a dollar amount on that. You really can't. You really and, oh, can't. By the way, if you get paid to do it, you get a check from just right. having fun, just helping people create their vision and dream. It's just like the icing on the cake. Right. And so yeah. money, I'll, I'll say, you know, yes, it feels great to get paid. Yes, it feels great to make money in your business. But if you're only doing it to make money, you're not going to be satisfied because right. it has to be tied to a deeper purpose. Because when the money is not coming in, because there are months where I've had months upon months without a sale, without any client, come on, um, multiple you still have to have the why. You still have to have the, it has to be a thing that's yeah. in it has still has to be a call. Like, are you still gonna be faithful and show up? Mm-hmm. And so it has to be beyond, it has to be bigger than finances. Yeah, it really does. It's, it's it has, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, the, why, the, the finances are tied to the why, you know, because even when I would coach women and I'll say, if they said $300 a month extra is what I need for my household budget, then I go, oh. okay, great. What are you going to do with it? Mm-hmm. And the, well, I'm going to pay for my daughter's childcare. Why is that important? Well, I really want to get her um, out of the one facility and put her in another facility and it's going to cost more. Why is moving her important? You know, and I mm-hmm. narrow it all the way down. And then she talks about the other facility will be safer. I've, you know, she would get a better quality education, you know, this, that, and the third. Okay. So that's your why. It's and not the motivate dollars. Yeah, make sure motivation. that your baby is safe and has a better quality of life, educational environment. So then when. When life happens, I'll say, listen, you're doing it for your baby. You're not doing it for the 300. Come on, that's you know, true. You, it's got to be tied to your heart. Otherwise, you'll quit. You'll, yeah. And you have to have an end state. Like you said, if you don't tell your dollar where to go, then stewardship is critical, I feel, also in entrepreneurship. And that ties in, I believe, with mentorship because we have stewardship over our clients. We have stewardship over the information that we're giving our clients or that we're discussing with our clients. And we have stewardship over time as you talked about and time over stewardship over this finances so people like it sounds fun to say i want six figures but now i'm looking at six gross figures versus six net figures i'm like i want six net figures that's right right, right. That's right. Yeah, it's looking your bank account like, <laughs> <laughs> you tell the gross sales and i'm like okay well praise him like i know what's possible but can we make that transition to the bank account yeah, right. exactly right. So then two, what do you, what are you going to do with six figures? Like, do you want it so that you can give more or squander more? You know, if, are you a good good. steward over your finances? Are you raping your business? So there's so many things you could talk about even out of this one podcast. Like just what's the intention? What's the intention? Ladies, I want to make sure that people who are paying attention to this podcast have a way to be able to connect with you. So Dr. Short, let's start with you. Can you please tell our listening audience how they can best connect with you and what you have coming up next in case they want to participate? Yes, they, my website is my full name, AnissaShort.com. They can start there. Um, they can find me on Facebook as the Success Strategist. Um, they could link with me there. My next event is actually April 6th. I'm hosting Breakfast with Champions. It's an intimate networking circle for women in business. The objective is to create common bonds and to create a tribe of women that are that are truly champions or becoming champions or evolving into a champion, whatever you so desire. But it was over breakfast. We always have business tips and tools, but it's about creating a network and a community that supports each other. So April 6th, the registration is available um, and it's only 40 to register. That includes mm-hmm. your lunch and all the nuggets that you're going to gain. And if they want more information about that, they can find it on my social media handle as well. Wonderful. And are you take are you currently taking coaching clients? Of course I am, Tisha. <laughs> yeah. Did you see my coach? My mentor says yes. Yes, she yes. Yeah, I saw her nod before am, you even I answered. am limiting my number though. I am limiting my number. I don't want to go over five right okay. now. So um, I have you. So I have room for four more. Okay. So they can awesome. look. Look, call now while supplies last. Yeah, you yeah. Know. while you okay. can, right? Get in while you while can. Dr. Come ready to well, I was going to say, come ready to invest, but also, um, Dr. Anissa, can you tell us about your course? Yes, oh, my yeah. online course. Oh, thank you for that. This is, and this is short consulting. My course is, is um, Foundations to Success. And so what I have is four awesome modules encompassed in that actual course that are foundational teachings. For any home-based, really for any entrepreneur, but I geared it towards home-based entrepreneurs. So we talk about the importance of mindset. Everything is principle-based because everything that I do, while I may not quote a scripture, trust and believe, I got the word of God to bag me up. So um, that course is available now as well. For a limited time, you can register for it for 97. So I'm looking for, let's see, at least 
the next 10 people can take advantage of that special course. And of course, again, connect with me and I'll send the link. Awesome. And then last thing, don't you have a book on mentorship? <laughs> he knows your stuff, honey. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Yes. My newest release is the Titus Two Principle, Reach, Teach, Lead. It's actually an anthology project, um, a collaboration, but the emphasis is on mentorship. If anyone's familiar with the scripture in Titus 2, it talks about the older men teaching the younger, the mm -hmm. older women teaching the younger. That's a mentorship principle. And so I had some fabulous co-authors write stories about the, how mentorship or their mentor made a significant oh, difference wonderful. in their lives. Mm -hmm. So yes, that book is available now on Amazon, or you can contact me directly and get your copy. Reach, what? teach, lead. The Titus 2 yes, principle. Yes, the Titus 2 principle. Reach, teach, lead. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so what else now, does she have, Dr. Carter? I feel like... <laughs> well, she did say Mary Kay. We want to be. We don't want to be like Lenny on Good Times. Right, so right, 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 right. <laughs> so what I have to offer is, so if you are um, one of three people, I'll say one of four people. So if you are someone who wants to become a certified Christian life coach, then you can become a certified Christian life coach through my company. It is a fully credentialed. 12 module course, you have a year to complete it. Also, um, I'm definitely on the lookout for uh, service-based professionals, entrepreneurs who are speakers, coaches, authors, or executives who want to package their expertise into an online school and digital course. I would love to serve you. I have a done with you product as well as a done for you product. And then if you are a woman who is broken, um, if you are like me, you have my experience, which is um, being a suicide survivor, a survivor of domestic violence, someone who did not master holiness and God brought me under judgment, but then healed me. Then I have an eight week uh, group coaching, transformational group coaching program called Superb Woman, um, eight weeks to superb. And so that is something I would love to um, talk with people more about. And then if you just need a mentor, if you're someone who is in business, but you're at a crossroads in business, meaning that you are like me. You have your website, you have your packages, you know who your client is, but you're not able to close or monetize your business. I do offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring. So how you can learn more about me is to go to my school website, which is breakpointcoaching.teachable.com. And that's where you can see all of my products and services. And as far as events, what I have coming up on March 26th is a webinar for speakers to take that speech and convert it into a digital course, a profitable digital course. So we will craft your outline in one day. So that is a paid webinar for um, professional speakers who want to craft their speech into a course. Okay. And so then my next event and Dr. Anissa tells me that. So she has so many amazing yummy services, guys. So <laughs> my next event is going to be in person. So that webinar is digital, but my in-person event is happening April 28th, Sunday, April 28th from two to four. And it's called Elevated Talk Brunch with Breakpoint. And so this is an event that is my vision for bringing together faith-based entrepreneurs to talk about all the hard things we talked about today, all the nuances of being a Christian owner, business owner, and how we can support each other. So we'll have a speaker, we'll have brunch, we'll have content, um, content opportunities, people to take pictures and things of that nature. And we're going to have the F, the F factor, which is, as I said, fun. So <laughs> faith, family, and fun. So that's it, April 28th. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you know, the Bible says you have not because you asked not. I asked you guys if you would participate and you guys came and showed up and I'm so very appreciative. Um, I want to tell everybody that's watching entrepreneurship is available to everyone, but it's not for everyone. You have to be um, dedicated. You have to be willing to work hard. You have to be coachable. You have to be um, you, you've got to be able to put your ego in check. There are many so many you have to's. But the one thing that I think we've been able to uncover today is that you really do have to be able to connect with other people that are like you, that know more than you know, so that you can glean from them. And you have to be willing to invest in that relationship. And so I hope that each of you will take the time to, if not these two women, that you will take the time to seek out your own mentor, your own coach, so that you can take your business to the next level. We are About Her Brand, the podcast that is all about the business of growing a business because we do recognize that growth is greater than potential. Potential is good, but growth is greater than potential. I want you to make sure that you tell a friend to tell a friend. I want you to like, share, subscribe, follow. I want you to make sure that if you know an entrepreneur, you share this podcast because we've got a lot of good stuff in store. 
Next episode, we're going to have Anne Marie Ziegler. She is from Array Marketing. She is a, a marketing guru and she has had a magazine for a long time in the community that I live in. And she just has a host of information that she's going to be willing to share with you guys. So make sure you tune in and we'll catch you guys on the next episode. Thank you.